Especially in front of our very first guest, a very familiar face to longtime King 5 viewers, Lori Matsukawa spent 36 years as an evening news anchor right here at King 5. She's joining us now because Lori just received a major honor and we just had to hear all about it so we invited her down. Lori, we are so happy to have you here. It is so Thanks, good to see Emily. you. This is wonderful. Thanks for inviting me. Um, absolutely. I just have to tell you before we get started, when your name is mentioned in about any place in this building, everyone's like, oh, man, I remember when Lori helped me with this. Oh, man, Lori was so good for this. And you were always so kind to me and helpful when I started here. So. Oh, well, thank you. We love Lori. You know, we love the King family, right? We Once we family, wanna, always family. We want to help each other out. For sure. So first of all, how is retirement? How's everything going? Retirement's going great. Um, this fall, I, my first children's book is <gasps> expected to be coming out. Oh it's my about, goodness. it's based loosely on my grandmother and babysitter growing up. Really? My grandmother was a picture bride. She immigrated from Japan with just a picture of her future husband oh my to goodness. guide her. And so um, it's kind of based on that. I it's a great that. children's book. And then in the spring, I'm hoping to have a memoir out. So we'll, I, we'll see what happens. But that's what I've been doing in this pandemic, right? Writing. writing. I can't wait for this memoir. You're going to have to come <laughs> back and tell us all about it. Okay. Throughout your career and your life here, you've also been very involved in Japanese culture in the Community Center of Washington. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your work there. I'm on the board right now, and I was a co-founder of the... Uh, of the board of the Cultural Center way back when, uh, this was in 2003, and it was just a place to take advantage of what, an existing building that was already there since 1913. It's the old Japanese language school, the oldest continuously operating Japanese language school in the United States, and it was like um, a, a place for people to gather, treasure the culture, and you don't have to be Japanese, of course, to come there. You just have to love things Japanese. So we have the language school, we have martial arts, we have taiko drumming, we have beautiful kinds of uh, artistic um, programs and things for the family to savor Japanese culture. I love this. And is, is it, can you come for special programs as well? Yep, we have special programs. In fact, this summer we have a children's summer camp. <laughs> is it fall? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, we have some spaces open, okay, so okay. it's not too late. Why are we talking about that later? <laughs> yeah. um, big news here, and we're so, so proud about this. Last week, you were the recipient of Japan's highest honors, the Order of the Rising Sun Gold and Silver Rays. Tell us, tell us about Okay, that. first of all, do you want to see it? Yes, okay, I want to see it. Is it is an actual medal. <gasps> it, is, it is an award given by the Emperor of Japan and the Prime Minister of Japan. Beautiful. And it's to recognize efforts by people to who want to increase the relationship or in, improve relationships between the people of Japan and the people of the United States. Oh. You know, for so long, um, I always felt that, you know, people in Japan would really be happy for Japanese Americans mm -hmm. because we've done well in the United States, as have Japanese who have immigrated to other countries. They just didn't know about us or yeah. know what we were doing. This is amazing, and you didn't go alone, actually. So, King Five, you may be retired, but we're still following you around, right? They, they filmed the whole thing? Well, Christine Pei was there, Joseph Huerta was there, and it was just a really lovely event that was held in the back of the Consul General's residence. And this is actually the uh, uh, Japanese ambassador to the United States who happened to be in town, so it was quite the honor to get you know, a presentation from him. And that, that certificate that you saw has the actual seal, the imperial seal oh from, the from the emperor and then the prime minister's seal on it. And there's the medal again. And I think it was given as a recognition for efforts through the Japanese Cultural Center, through the US-Japan Council and other groups that I work with to make that friendship, that people-to-people -people mm -hmm. connection. Yeah. And that's the only way we get to know each other, really. That is true, and that is kind of at the heart of what you did as a journalist for so many years. Let's talk about, how did you find out you were getting this award? I got an email, oh, <laughs> I got an of email course. from the Consul General here in Seattle, and I, I was shocked, and I was uh, very humbled because this is such a special award, and I really wished my grandparents and parents were still alive and yeah. could savor this moment because it's quite amazing when you think about a third-generation person receiving such recognition from the government of Japan. I'm sure they would be so proud. So, quick story? Yes, please. Um, this all came about after I covered 
heard Governor Gary Locke's first trade mission to China. Mm -hmm. Wherever he went, he was treated like a rock star. Right? right? There were throngs of people in the streets. There were marching bands. The police had to hold hands and create a human fence to keep back all the mm -hmm. well-wishers. And I asked a Chinese-American person, why, why is this happening? And she said, oh, they're so happy and proud that Chinese are doing so well in America. Mm -hmm. And they're welcoming their little brother back home. And so I thought, you know, the people of Japan should know more about Japanese Americans because if they did learn about the trials and tribulations of the immigrants, mm -hmm. what we went through after the incarceration in World War II, right. and despite discrimination, overcoming that and succeeding, I think the people in Japan would be very happy and very proud for their brothers and sisters here. And you went to Japan twice covering stories right. for King Five, right? Exactly, because there's so much we can learn from the people of Japan, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to things that affect us in the Northwest earthquake recovery, tsunami recovery. We went to Fukushima, you can see this video here. Wow. How do you recover from a nuclear disaster? Right. You know, these are things that could very well happen here in the Northwest and we can learn a lot from what the people in Japan have been through. What are your personal ties to Japan? Uh, my grandparents immigrated from Japan. My mom's parents were dairy farmers. My dad's parents worked on a sugar plantation in Hawaii. And so they didn't speak Japanese, uh, they didn't speak English, so, and I didn't speak Japanese either. Because growing up in Hawaii, my mother said, oh, do you want to go to Japanese school or hula dance school? And I said, hula dance I mean, school? What? So um, I never did learn to speak Japanese, but I took lessons later in life as an adult. I it's love just been it. kind of fun. And you still do hula? I still do hula. Okay, that's another <laughs> segment no. altogether. I shouldn't have mentioned it. Uh, oh, <laughs> don't think you're getting off that easy. Um, but before we stop talking about journalism, I have to ask you, I'll never forget your King Five series, Prisoners in Their Own Land. It was so powerful, it was awarded. Were you told stories about the Japanese internment camps? when you were uh, young or when you were in the Pacific Northwest moving here and, and why did you cover that specifically? It started right here in the Pacific Northwest. The people of Bainbridge Island were the very first Japanese Americans to be actually put on trains and taken to camps. Mm -hmm. And so it was fitting that we mark this anniversary, it was the 75th anniversary of the executive order that sent oh, 120,000 Japanese Americans to these camps. Actually just deprived them of their homes, their businesses, their cars. Mm -hmm. They even had to leave their pets behind. You couldn't take your pet to these camps. Oh it's heartbreaking. Uh, there are so many people who are damaged by this and yet they, the soldiers, who Japanese American soldiers volunteered from camp to, to fight for the United States. The very government that locked up their families, they fought ferociously and became one of the high, most highly decorated units in U.S. Army history. So it's, it's, it's a amazing. great story. I watched all your stories and I still get the chills <laughs> when you tell it again. Lori, thank you so much for coming. Congratulations on your honor. We're going to have you back to talk about your memoir and Tahula. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, former King 5 anchor, uh, a hero to all of us. Oh, Emity, thanks. And an author, Lori Matsukawa, thank you.